Hey brothers and sisters, so I wasn't going to share this when it happened, um, but now that I'm going through the book of Exodus, the Lord has really put this on my heart that I needed to share it and has given me interpretation of it. So a little while back, I came across this woman pastor. I just felt in my spirit that something was not right and that she was not preaching the true gospel and the word of God. And I just had that impression by the Holy Spirit. That after meeting this pastor, I started just praying about the whole situation, about that pastor and that church. And that night, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was in this big church. And downstairs, they had a separate woman pastor. And I noticed this huge ivy or lily pad looking plant just stretching out across the stage and filling up the entire upper portion of this church. And there were huge frogs sitting on these lily pads everywhere. It just looked like they were multiplying and filling up this church. And this woman was making a mockery of her role as a pastor and arguing and fighting with a church member that was sitting in the seats in the pews. And I looked over to my left and on the big projector screen, I see a snake eat a frog and try to swallow it. But inside the snake's body, the frog turns into an alligator. So the snake spits it back out and it's a frog again. And I could see the outline of the alligator's open jaws through the snake's skin before it spit it out. And it was so vivid. It, I mean, I would compare it to a vision, I guess. I've never had an open vision or a vision during the day, but it was extremely symbolic and extremely vivid. And when I woke up, I truly felt like it was confirmation from the Lord about uh, what was going on at this church, at this pastor that I met. So because of that dream, I decided to try to look up the church that this pastor preaches at. And sure enough, in their description of what they believe, they were open to homosexuality. And not only that, that they basically celebrate all forms of sexuality, but not only that, but there is a section about how they don't believe that the Bible is inerrant and that it was written by humans who make mistakes, that it is a great text to go by, but they believe that because humans wrote it and humans make mistakes, that it is not inerrant. And I was just completely disgusted by that. It's one thing to want those people to come in and hear the gospel and be changed, and I'm all for that, but to openly celebrate it as if it's not a sin and doesn't go against the Word of God is just false. And but I believe that the fact that they don't even reverence the Word of God as inerrant was even worse, which explains why they are open to celebrate a sin and things that go against the Word of God. So I was just really, really bothered by it, but it was confirmation of the dream, and it was confirmation of what the Lord had put on my heart when I met this person. And so I sent it to a few people, and I sent it to a couple of sisters in Christ, but honestly, I didn't know what to do with it, and I did not really know the interpretation of the dream other than a snake. We know that represents the enemy, and um, the fact that this frog turned into a crocodile, it reminded me of my dream back in 2012. It was 
the first dream I've ever had that I felt like was from the Lord. And I grew up in a Baptist church, so dreams and visions were not really believed in. And I personally didn't believe that God could speak in dreams and visions. Well, in 2012, I had a dream of me floating down this river with a bunch of friends and people that I knew. And then all of a sudden, I see these crocodiles come up and snatch the people through their inner tubes and devour them. And I'm yelling and screaming and telling people that there are crocodiles that are killing people and no one is listening to me. And so I get out of the river and I begin to run in the opposite direction. And that dream shook me to my core and actually started the dream with a rider on a white horse going through the sky. I could see it through my window. So that's how the dream started and then it changed to being in this river. And so it reminded me of that, but I didn't know what to do with it. I knew that the overall meaning of the dream was that this woman was not operating by the Spirit of God. And this snake was a representation of how this church was overcome by demonic beliefs and practices. But other than that, I didn't know any kind of deeper meaning, just kind of an overall interpretation until this morning. So I've been going through the book of Exodus and the Lord has really placed the book of Exodus on my heart with this solar eclipse and just prompted me to really study the book of Exodus. And so I started reading Exodus chapter 7 this morning. And in Exodus chapter 7, it talks about the plagues. One of the plagues was turning the Nile River into blood. And in my devotion, it was talking about how this was a direct response of how the Egyptians and Pharaoh ordered that all the Hebrew babies would be killed and thrown into the Nile. And so the Nile River turning into blood is a reminder of the fact that they had blood on their hands and all of the evil things that they had done. And also how it points back to the book of Genesis where Abel's blood cried out from the ground. And not only that, but the fact that this river was turned into blood was a mockery of the false gods of Egypt. Specifically, my devotion named a few of the false gods of Egypt. And as soon as they said one of the gods, the Lord just reminded me of my dream. So my devotion named this god Hopi. And it went on to talk about how it was the crocodile god or the spirit of the Nile. It didn't really go into detail about this god, but because the Lord had reminded me of this dream of these frogs and this snake and crocodile, I decided to go and do a little bit of research. And what I found just blew me away. So this hoppy god, this false god, wears a false beard and has breasts like a woman. And it's depicted as an intersex person, which is crazy because my dream was about a woman pastor who was preaching at this church that was celebrating this intersex, same-sex, transgender movement and welcoming it. And the symbol of this God is a lotus plant. The plant that I saw, the only way I could describe it was like a lily pad. So I went to look into it and pretty much a lotus plant is a lily pad. And this is pretty much exactly what I saw in my dream. And, but they were growing up and covering the entire front portion of the church. And the frogs were sitting on these huge lily pads. And in Lower Egypt, this god was adorned with papyrus plants and attended by frogs. In that part, I just couldn't believe it. Um, that this false god is attended by frogs. So this is a god of crocodiles being attended by frogs. And frogs throughout history, ancient Rome and Greece, 
They are symbols of fertility and uh, harmony and licentiousness, which explains this dream. This, this church is based off of licentiousness and a false teaching and really a false God and spirit operating in this church. So what blew me away even more is I found this article about the following chapter in Exodus chapter 8, and it's called The Second Plague, Jehovah Destroys the Egyptian Fertility Goddess. So we have Hopi, which is the god, uh, the crocodile god, this, this intersex person, but then also there is a goddess of fertility, and this Kekhet, I may be pronouncing that wrong or incorrectly, but it is a major goddess of Egypt and is depicted as a human female with a frog's head. And she was the spouse of the creator god Kum, I believe is how you pronounce it. And the Egyptians believed that uh, Kum was actually the one who fashioned human bodies and then Keket was responsible for breathing life into them. We know that the one true living God Yahweh, Jehovah, the I Am, breathed life into Adam in the Garden of Eden. And so these false gods are basically just point back to Satan and the great deceiver. The Egyptians also believed that Keket controlled the multiplication of frogs in ancient Egypt through the frog-eating crocodiles, which this is crazy because in this church there were frogs everywhere and I remember thinking in the dream these frogs are just multiplying they are all over the place and it says in the multiplication of frogs Jehovah overwhelms Keket and causes her to be impotent in her task because she was the goddess of multiplication of frogs here Jehovah overwhelms this false god and causes her to be impotent and powerless against Jehovah's decree. And Keket is powerless to repel or resist Jehovah's overpowering regeneration of frogs. And so this plague here in Exodus 8 was the Lord mocking these false gods and overpowering them and sending a message to the Egyptians that he is the one true living God and these false gods have no power or authority over him. It says God is sovereign over fertility, God is sovereign over Egypt, and God is sovereign over the false gods of Egypt. And I wanted to read a little bit of Exodus 8 as well. So in Exodus 8, starting in verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses? that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow, and he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. 
they shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord goes on to deliver even more plagues and judgments against Egypt because the Pharaoh continued to harden his heart and not let God's people go. But I believe that this dream of all of these frogs and this snake eating this frog and the frog turning into a crocodile and the snake spitting it out is a representation of these plagues and of judgment and of these false spirits that are operating in many churches in America and worldwide and how they are taking on and consuming this spirit and these beliefs that go along with these spirits. And I believe these false gods that the Egyptians believed in were demonic entities, demonic spirits. And it all goes back to the ultimate demonic entity, which is Satan and the ultimate deceiver and how all of these false beliefs, false religions, false gods were started by him. But ultimately, our God is the one true God and none of these false spirits, none of these demonic entities have any authority over the one true living God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end and he is in ultimate control and i believe the lord was just revealing to me this spirit that is operating in these churches and i just wanted to share that because it really goes along with all of the videos that i've put out recently that i truly believe that judgment is coming upon this world and Plagues are coming, but they will far surpass the plagues of Egypt. Uh, the book of Revelation it talks about a tribulation period that is not like anything that the world has ever seen before. And it's time to put your trust in Jesus Christ and to come out of these false religions, these false beliefs, and these false Christs. There is only one Jesus Christ and he is the word. It says in John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. If there is anyone coming along proclaiming that they are preaching a gospel or that they believe in Jesus or that Jesus is Lord, but yet they don't honor the scripture and they don't honor the word of God and they come against the word of God, then they are proclaiming a false Christ because Jesus would never go against the Word of God. All throughout the New Testament, He affirmed the Scriptures. And so we must test the spirits and test all things and bring all things under the authority of the Word of God because it is the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but through him, all of these false gods and idols, they come crumbling down in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord brought to mind some scriptures regarding this dream. One being in Revelation 16 verses 13 through 14. It says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Here, these frogs are a symbol of unclean spirits, and they actually come from the dragon, Satan, himself. And I do believe that this snake 
represented the dragon in the stream. And these frogs represented unclean spirits. Another scripture I was reminded of in regards to the lasciviousness of these churches who proclaim to love Jesus Christ and place themselves under this banner of love, which really is not love at all. It reminds me of Romans 1, starting in verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This reminds me of this woman pastor that was arguing with this person in the pews, and there was just this spirit of pride and boasting and backbiting. But not only that, knowing that what that church believes in and represents, this entire scripture is about that. They proclaim God and say that they know God, but they don't glorify him as God. And they are given over to their vain imaginations and unto foolishness. And it reminds me also of the Egyptians and their worship of multiple gods and all of their idols, idols that symbolize creeping things and animals and how foolish it is to replace the worship of and glory of an incorruptible God and instead worship these man-made idols and worship the creation instead of the creator. And so I truly believe that this dream was from the Lord, that it's a warning to the apostate church. And I believe that these churches that are teaching and preaching these things that go against the Word of God, that they are under judgment, whether it happens here on this earth or when this life is over, that they will have to give an account for all of those things that they have taught that is contrary to the Word of God and all of those things they have taught by another spirit and not by the Holy Spirit of God.